these will be personal notes that I'm going to be giving about the Nazir. And this will be my deepest contribution and probably my last contribution. That the Nazir is the power behind the throne, so to speak. There's a power behind the throne, a, a power like a koach, because the koach comes from Hokmah, the letters reversed, and it's the koach of, of Ma, that's the of the 45 name, that's man. And the whenever something's with koach, it has to do with the hands, the, the 14 perics of each hand. Going into the, making two hands, 28 perics, that's koach. And this koach is expressed through the uh, Birchat Kohanim. Now the Birchat Kohanim uh, comes, the blessing of the priests, of uh, the Kohanes, comes right after the section of Nazir in, in uh, Naso uh, Midbar uh, chapter 6. And right after the Nazir comes the whole thing about the Kohanim. And so behind the Kohanim's power of, of that essence of, of the projection is somebody that's behind them, so to speak, who's not receiving the blessing, but issuing the blessing. The under, underlying fact is the, the power behind the throne. And remember that, that, that the big number here of, of, of Nazir is 267 and that's the same n uh, n number as the Makaba 267 and it's also the same number as the Markaz the center where the Ein Sof has a Zimzum and the power is in the center the, in the Markaz and the Zimzum is 266 which is and plus one, which would be 267. And that zimzum is the same as Aleph in full 266. And then plus one, 267. And the whole idea of the Nazir as, uh, uh, you know, in my opinion, the whole idea of the Nazir is the retention of the sexual seed of the Yud itself in the Nazir as without the Yud, 257, which means separated, this whole idea of it's a separation. The Nazir to me is a proof uh, and a, a, a realization of the community in that there is a community to be separated from. To be separated, you have to be separated from something. So there has to be a belief in the community in order to be separated from that community. So I was looking today, I saw the word sof and the word ketz, both meaning of yesod. And that the yes, that's the that's the end. So to speak, the end because it's the it's the it's the phallus. It's it's the penis the end and so when you're dealing in Ein Sof you're talking about the power that's in Yesod and that's the sexual power Ein Sof is actually the sexual the old sexual power it's not much different than the than the Freudian concept you see so the whole idea of the power of, of this of this orgasmic power and creative power that actually separates man from woman you see but if you but also but always remember a nausea can be a woman because even in her the sexuality of separation it's a whole different kind of ball game and this idea now of markaz to me the center 267 and it's din by the way of, 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 of 
of um, of uh, uh, 480 represents this center is the source of not only the nausea but of the citra akra and in that center it, you you have that's why that's why it, it's a it's a real ain soft there in that center where the power of the na, of the 267 of the nausea comes together with the ain soft this whole this whole idea the, the, uh, uh, with the citra akra and this parallel between the citra akra and the and 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 the ain soft and quite frankly if one can't find the 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 citra akra within the ain soft then one's only fooling anyway and this specific power of manifestation within the citra akra is a proof of this ain soft power of yesod and of the creative energy of the seed. So this whole idea of, of what the, the purpose of the nausea, the purpose of the nausea is, is, is the purpose of Judaism. The goal of Judaism is, is, is to have an individuation within the community, you see. An individuation within the community. And the Nazir is the individual self. When the man, even a Kohen, can become a Nazir. When this, when this, when this Nazir is the underlying force of the blessing of the Kohen. Because when the two of them are Kohen and a, and a, and a Nazi are walking down the street and there has to be a met mitzvah, the, the Nazi does it. He's the underlying real. The, the real, the mamish. It gives the, gives the Kohen his, his right to bless, so to speak. He doesn't have to become met, uh, Tame or whatever it is. And this is the, this part of my great secret here of the power behind the throne, the power to give that the, 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 the brings out uh, the blessing of the other. And it's the same thing. This is what happened when my a brother. There's some stuff in the last daf. I, I think I'm going to find. I thought I read it today, but I have to find it. The, the it's like my brother found the minion for me. I get the credit for the minion, but my brother found it for me. This is what they, uh, the saying almost uh, in the in the last daf of the talking about who is higher, the person who says the bracha or the person who responds amen to the bar. In a certain sense, the person who responds amen to the to the block is higher than the person, and the person who who empowers the other is stronger than the other. You see, and that's why the teacher, in a certain sense, who empowers the student, it shows that he's higher than the student because he's empowering the student you see he's empowering the performer this is the same way even in Broadway theater like the writer and the director are empowering the actor acting is usually given the manifestation role but there's what we'll call is the, the the power behind the scenes you see this is the same thing that happens I mean even in the mob the mafia like what happened with Gotti Gotti was given the front role you see he was given the front role you know they 
he had the community, he had the Thanksgiving dinners, he used to give turkeys out and chickens or whatever, or, you know, turkeys out on Thanksgiving, everybody used to come and say, oh, what a great man God he is, and then he was the one that went to jail, the real bosses, you don't know. And this is the whole idea that there's a power behind the throne. This power behind the throne is the real power. And in Judaism, that's the nausea. And nausea is a self-made man. You know? It doesn't matter how one was born. It matters what he does here. It's the community is the one that empowers the nausea, who then empowers the community. There has to be a community from which the nausea comes. This is the 60, from which the one can come. Once that one comes and the one gives power to the 60, so that's why this, this Biddle B'Shashim, Ehad B'Shashim, you know, who's more important, the one who gives the blessing or the one who receives. It's an interaction. It's a total interaction and intermeshing of all these levels of power that rise and fall in each different level that you go in. And then, then one day one becomes one and then one day for the next level it's the other. So one really doesn't know what is the power behind the throne. Is it are the people the power behind the throne of the Melach? Isn't it the, the people who, who create the king? Isn't it the people that create the Rebbe? The, the Hasids that create the Rebbe? But then the Rebbe permits himself to be a Rebbe for these people. So we don't know who's higher or who's first, the chicken or the egg. And it depends from which way you look. In my own estimations, what is it? Is the nausea, is the nausea a, a, a gavra? Or is the nausea a hefsa? When one loses the animal soul, and it feels that he's only partly a godly soul. And he takes on something that looks like an animal soul. It's like a gavra. Uh, uh, he, 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 I mean, he's like a hefsa. Takes on an object. It's nothing. He is an object. His body is an object. It's not a gavra. It's a hefsa. And then from that hefsa, again, he, it, it, it's just the same thing. It, the, are these, is the nausea, is, is he a, 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 a net, is his netter a, a hefsa? Is he taking these things on as a gavra or is he taking three hefsas? And this is debatable and it'll never be figured out unless one understands the underlying uh, uh, deconstruction within the, within the text. And what's the point of the underlying? Because in the true sense, when you do deconstruction, it's the same thing. You have to figure out what the writer was actually trying to say. What he was really trying to say is never stipulated in the writing. Because any writing becomes an object which can't show the underlying value. That's why as a community, the Nazir isn't to accept. There are no female Nazirs in the world. Yet they're permitted. All women want to put on tefillin, wear titsis. The one thing, the highest thing they're permitted to do, they're not even interested in. The things that they're not permitted to do or not, not uh, accustomed to do, that's what they want. They want to be like men.
The min hogs aren't that. There's no min hog for a woman to put tefillin on, but she can be a nausea. The highest thing. Nobody's doing that. So, these are this how I'm starting. Always remember one thing that the, the key ingredient of being a nausea is the name Yud Hey Yud Hey. That's the real secret. It's that it's it's Yud Hey Vav Hey in the next world. In the when the Mashiach comes, the Yud Hey will will be a mirror image down here. Strangely enough, in Rastafarianism, they use that name Yah, and they even use words like Yah Yah, and that's what we really are in. Yah Yah. Yad, 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 each Yad is 14 plus 1 is 15, that's Yah. And that's two of those. And those are the two hands of the Kohanim giving the blessing. It's a 14 Perix. Plus, in my estimation, the center point of the palm as a 15th spot making a yah and the two making a 15 and, the, and then the yud and the hay and so these two are yah and yah and underneath that underneath that blessing of the kohanim is the source of that blessing which is the yah yah of the nazir so here I am walking on a it's actually here what they call uh, uh, Halloween. I forget what, what Halloween means in the, you know. I'll look it up. So this was a nice sheer for me for Halloween. In a deep essence. There's a parallelism between April Fool and Halloween in the non-Jewish world. This is my this is my contribution. It turned out to be this is the start of my contribution.